Hi everyone and welcome again to another episode in the history of medicine and this one ladies and gentlemen we are looking at something called or later called the wonder drug of the 20th century yes we're looking at the development of medi of penicillin sorry penicillin now penicillin was our first successful antibiotic there's a key medical term what do we mean well an antibiotic a drug made from bacteria which kills other bacteria so that we can cure infection and illness and hopefully I will show you in this video that this was a very important change it was hugely important in the history of medicine and we need to look at why actually it was so important and also how we developed penicillin and we have to go back roughly 100 years to the first world war ladies and gentlemen a terrible war now many doctors went over where the trenches were in france and belgium to help look after the wounded soldiers and one man who went over to france was a man called dr alexander fleming his job was to treat the wounded soldiers now if you were wounded in the trench you'd be taken often to a field hospital which was literally a hospital in a field conditions were not that clean or hygienic despite the work done by nightingale despite the work done by pasteur germ theory lister carbolic acid the conditions in the trenches were filthy and sometimes the conditions in the hospitals were not that clean by the time the soldiers got to alexander fleming for treatment they were often infected with bacteria or germs two killer germs in particular streptococcus and staphylococcus great names but poor old Dr. soldiers die in his hospital not from the bullet itself they'd survived the initial wound it was the infection there you see one of my books on world war one some mud mud filth dirt equals infection equal death in too many cases and it had a huge impact on dr alexander fleming and when the first world war eventually came to a conclusion in 1918 fleming returned to this country and he was determined to try and do something about this later in a book he was quoted as saying i was consumed by a desire to discover something which would kill those microbes something like salvarsan well if you remember our video on magic bullets salvarsan 606 was the first successful magic bullet but what fleming was after wasn't something which just killed one germ he wanted to try and discover something maybe which would kill more germs particularly those killers remember streptococcus staphylococcus so he spends years he's a very determined man now after four years just remove my world war one helmet after four years 1922 he comes up with something in human tears something called lysozyme and that did kill some of the germs but unfortunately not the real killer germs streptococcus so he'd had some success but not enough it was enough to make a grown man cry oh, sorry sorry but he didn't give up he was determined and he carried on and then carried on for another six years ladies and gentlemen so now we're up to 1928 fleming has been looking for 10 years it's a long job he hasn't had that much success so he says do you know what i need a holiday we're all going on a summer holiday no more worries for a week or two so he goes off on holiday great news has a great time when he comes back from holiday oh no look at the bench in my laboratory it's all a mess it's a right mess i need to tidy up 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've gone into some teachers' classes. Some teachers, their desks are perfectly clean and tidy and neat. Other teachers, their desks are a right mess. Fleming's desk, his bench in his laboratory was a bit of a mess. So after his holiday, he said, I need to tidy up. Quick, let's throw all this stuff away. So he's chatting to a colleague one day and he's throwing away various bits of scientific equipment on his desk. Now, those of you who do science, you might see in your science laboratory in your lessons, Petri dishes. And Fleming is throwing them away. And he just happens by luck, by chance, to look down just before he's throwing the Petri dishes away. And the one in his hand, he notices, if you look carefully, can you see there? He's been growing germs in the Petri dish. But here at the top, can you see where I'm pointing? Was an area where there were no germs. Now he could have just thrown it away. And here, it was not planned. So here is luck or chance playing a big part. He investigates further. And he realises that something has landed on the Petri dish, floating in the air, maybe from a laboratory upstairs. And he looks under the microscope and he identifies it. It was Penicillium notatum. The mould has grown on it. Now, what does he do? Penicillium notatum. Kills germs. Kills the killer germs that we're interested in. Here we have a fantastic discovery. So Fleming, being a good scientist, writes it all down in a medical journal. What would happen next? We've got one of the biggest discoveries of all time. Superb, you might say. 1928, 1929, it's sorted. What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. For 10 more years. This great discovery, he's written it down, Penicillin from the mould, Penicillium notatum, it could change the world, it could mould the future. Sorry, sorry about that. Nothing happened for 10 years. Strange, but true. Fast forward, 1938. Two more scientists, two more doctors. Flory and Chain both based in Oxford, Oxford University. And they read Fleming's article. They say, hmm, this is quite interesting. I think there is some potential here. Let's investigate further. And they realised what you have to do is somehow, one, purify the penicillin, and two, mass produce it. Two great tasks, but they're onto something. 1938, 39. They asked the British government for help. Please, look, we've got something here. It could be very important in medicine. Help us out. The British government said, yeah, of course, we'll be delighted to help. Here, have £25. 1939, 1940. What were the British government doing? World War II. They were concentrating on other areas. They didn't have enough time or money for Florian Jane. World War II was taking their demands elsewhere. So Florian and Shane have to work on their own and they work on mice. And it is very, very encouraging. The results are very successful. But they realise if they're going to work on humans, they need to produce more pure penicillin. So there they are in Oxford using pots, pans, just doing it themselves, time, trying to produce enough pure penicillin to give to humans. The story continues with a police officer, Mr. Albert Alexander. Great helmet. Now, Albert Alexander, unfortunately for this gentleman, he got ill with blood poisoning. He was going to die. Nothing could save him. Florian Chain stepped forward. Albert Alexander is in the John Ratcliffe 
hospital which is in Oxford they're based in Oxford I say right why don't we try our pure penicillin on the police officer Albert Alexander begins to recover because the penicillin is killing the germs which is infecting him great news but then tragically sadly Florian Chain run out of the pure penicillin they, it runs out before they've killed all of the germ in Mr. Alexander. So sadly, the germ isn't totally wiped out. It develops again, and sadly, Albert Alexander died. But he'd been the first human to be given the penicillin, and the results would have been very, very encouraging if they'd had enough. So, what did Florian Chain do? Sorry about that. What did Florian Chain do? Well, the British government can't help them. What could they do? Well, they could go somewhere else. Where could they go? Da, 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 da. They could go to America, the richest country in the world. Of course they could. So they go across. Flory goes across to America. Now, first, in America mm, they're quite interested give a little bit of money but not enough but then something happens which changes the situation completely 7th of December 1941 anyone know what happens 7th of December 1941 World War II the Japanese attack the American Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor this brings America into the war. Now, the American governments are thinking, right, we're going to fight. There's going to be thousands and thousands of soldiers wounded. Didn't we speak to someone who was saying they've got something which will treat infections? Quick, let's sort this out. And the American government get involved with the Yankee dollar. They provide millions and millions and millions of dollars for Florian Chain to produce pure penicillin on a huge scale. Mass produced. And the American government say to the American drug companies, right, we'll give you an interest free loan. You get involved. You also can produce pure penicillin. And the drug companies like Pfizer say, right, that's great. We'll make money and we'll help the country. Then, of course, the British government say, ah, right, that's important. We'll get involved. They realised the value because of World War II. So here we see war, government, money, all playing a part. And by D-Day, 6th of June, 1944, the Allies, the British and the American had more than two million doses of the pure penicillin. And they helped to win the war. That's how important it was during the war. Penicillin. But obviously then the war is over. 1945. Fleming, Florey, Chain all win the Nobel Prize. Of course they do. Because penicillin has been massively important. So, as we come to the end of the video, what factors were involved in the story? Well, have a think. War, World War I and World War II. The individuals, Fleming, carrying on for 10 years, determined. Communication. Florian Chain read the medical journal. And the research of Fleming. Science, technology, experiments, governments, finance, teamwork, they're all there in the story. How important was the discovery of penicillin? Where do you put it? Well, surely it has to be right at the top. Surely it was massively important. Why? Any ideas? Why was it better than the magic bullets? Well, the magic bullet would kill one germ. Here we have the penicillin killing a whole variety of germs. More effective. 
go back into history. The four humours taking blood, all the ridiculous cures that had been tried before, back in history, hundreds of years before. Finally, after all the work done by great scientists like Pasteur and Koch, etc., finally we've got something which was a great and effective way of curing illnesses and curing people once they had the disease. In some ways better than vaccination. Vaccination prevented them getting the disease, but was no use if you've already got it. Here we have the game changer. Penicillin. How important. Hope it's been useful, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you soon for the next video. All the best now. Take care.